Good morning, class. So, welcome to our class for today, future teachers. Uh, let us start our day with a prayer. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, welcome to our class, future teachers. Uh, so for your attendance, kindly type your name in, your, in our chat box so that I can check, out, check it on later. So before we start a new topic for today, uh, let's help. Let's just have a short recap of our previous lesson. So, can anyone here share or have learned something from the last time's topic? So, can anyone volunteer? Okay, Miss Edom. Yeah, that's correct. So, our topic last time is all about the, the teaching profession and the four cornerstone of pedagogy so there are four cornerstone of pedagogy first is the generative topic second is the understanding goals third is the performances of understanding and the ongoing assessment so for today class we're going to discuss all about the learner as the first element of teaching and learning so, we have here in, in my PowerPoint presentation, as you can see, okay, this is the last lesson in our first module, so the learner. So, what are the objectives of this lesson? Explain the factors affecting the cognitive development of children, enumerate ways by which teachers can promote their students' cognitive development, distinguish independent learners from other students, and differentiate deep and surface approaches to learning. So what is learner? So anyone here can... can describe a learner or can give a short description of of a learner so class a learner is an embodied spirit he is neither body nor spirit alone the second one is the learner has the power to see hear touch smell and taste so the five senses are present the learner also has a power to perceive, imagine, retain, recall, recognize past mental acts, conceive ideas, make judgment, reason out, and feel, feel and choose. The third description is the learner is the core of the teaching learning process. Why? Why are the learners is the, are the core? of the teaching learning process because it is in the learner that revolves all activities related to classroom activities and the learner is the person who is who receives instruction from the teacher the fourth one is a learner is either a pupil or a student depending upon the level of education being pursued. What does this mean? What is the difference between a pupil and a student class? So anyone here can answer that question? Okay, Miss Naku. Yes, you're right. A pupil is a learner from an elementary level and a student is a learner 
beyond elementary level. We have here the factors affecting cognitive development of children. First, we have biological factors. Second, we have environmental factors. So, in, in biological factors, we have senses, intelligence, heredity, and maturity. While in environmental factors, includes learning opportunities, economic status, play is an important in developing cognition, various types of stimuli, and family and society. Biological factors. So, biological factors are substances that affect biological systems and that are necessary to produce a result or cause an activity in the body. So, the first one is the senses. So, you know, you already know the five senses. So sense organs receive stimuli from the environment. The proper development hel helps in receiving correct stimuli for the formation of correct concepts. When sense organs are defective, they collect defective stimuli. And as a, as a, as a result, class, wrong concepts are formed. Hence, the cognitive development will not be perfect. So, that's the result when there is a defect in our sense organs. So, we can develop perfectly. The second one is intelligence. So, intelligence class is the ability to learn about, learn from, understand, and effectively interrelate with one's environment. So, the abil this ability cons consists of a number of specific abilities that include adaptability to a new environment or flexibility to changes in the existing environment, capacity for knowledge, and to, ac to ability to acquire it, capacity for reason or logic in abstract thought, ability to understand relationship, ability to evaluate and decide, and the capacity to original or unique and productive thought. So, that is intelligence class. The third one, we have it here, heredity. Uh, this is the process of transmitting characteristics from one generation to the next such as uh, transmitting blue eyes or skin color to one's descendants. Hearing loss can be an inherited characteristic. Cognitive development is also influenced by the hereditary traits one gets from his parents. Their development is similar to their, to their parents' cognitive development. The last one is the maturity or maturation. This is the process of learning to cope and respond in an emotionally appropriate way. It may not necessarily be realized along with aging or physical growth, but it is part of growth and development. The second factor is the environmental factors. Environmental includes the surroundings, conditions or influences that affect in that affect an organism so the environmental factors can be divided into physical biological social cultural and spiritual any of all any or all of which can influence the health status of people so we have here the learning process or the learning opportunities the opportunity for learning affects cognitive development. The more opportunities the learner gets, the better is the cognition, because he will be able to add to his mental capacities by letting through these opportunities. The second one is 
Play is also important in developing cognition. Play activities are opportunity to interact with the environment, receive stimuli, and respond to them. Through this, as he learns new processes, he acquires knowledge, forms new communication, draws a regular sketch with clients. The third one is economic status. A family's economic status also helps in the development of cognition. Learners from the better economic status get more opportunities and be trained. Next is the various types of stimuli. As a child grows, he gets various stimuli from the environment through his senses and perceives their meanings. He gets ass assistance from parents and other people around him and is able to get the right meanings of stimuli. Instructions and motivation also help in the cognitive development of the learner. Family and Society Family is important from the point of view of, of the providing of the child hereditary traits. Family also provides good opportunities to learn through observation and imitation of other people and members or the family. The members of the family, rather. The child's association with other children also influences his cognitive development. We have here the seven characteristics of independent learner. So, not all students can be an independent learners. Some students naturally become independent learners and based on life circumstances and learning style. So, we have here the seven characteristics of independent learners. The first one class is the curiosity. So, Independent learner is curious about the world. He or she seek out ways to explore. They adopt learning from varied learning styles and veer away from traditional instruction. They are proactive on their own. They look for additional lesson supplements. The second one is the self-motivation. Intrinsic motivation far surpasses any price or reward system. Setting internal goals to achieve motivates independent learners. They have driven by their own achievements and failures. The next one is the self-examination. Independent learners go into self-evaluation. They can see their strengths and weaknesses and measure their progress. They keep track of their own achievements and failures. The fourth one is the accountability. This means responsibility. Knowing what you have to do and doing it without anyone telling you to. The sooner a student becomes responsible for consequences of his actions and decisions, the less dependent he will be to outside sources for discipline or motivation. The fifth one is the critical thinking. Independent learners think critically of a situation. They examine all possibilities and often come up with multiple solutions. They do not memorize. They probe and analyze the nature of things or situations. They ask why and formulate answers based on real-world observation and intelligent deduction. Next is the comprehension with little or no instruction. Independent learners have the ability to read, visualize, or kinesthetically instruct themselves. Regardless of the topic or subject studied, an, ind an independent learner will find ways to understand material through application. The last one is the persistence. Independent learners are serious learners who do not give up easily. They strive to understand a concept as much as possible by working on their own before asking for help. They also apply self-discipline when faced with difficulty in finding easy answer to a problem. 
They teach themselves and only ask questions after failing to find a solution on their own. Understanding learners. A teacher, a teacher class would find it hard to influence a wider environment, but he can set up the circumstances in the class to encourage each student to learn. Theories of learning, too, can help arrive at what questions to ask students in class and how to engage and motivate them. The list of theories relevant to learning that can help teachers understand the different ways students learn is almost endless. Next one is the two approaches to learning. Deep learning and surface learning. So this deep learning involves the critical and in-depth analysis of new ideas, relating them with already known concepts and principles. It promotes understanding and long-term retention of concepts that are used for problem solving of uncommon contexts. It is also applied to real-life situations. Surface learning in the explicit recognition of information and memorization. Facts are isolated and unlinked, and this leads to superficial retention of materials for examinations that neither promote understanding nor lasting retention of knowledge and information. So we have here the characteristics and factors that encourage deep and surface approaches to learning. So we have discussed the definition of the deep and surface learning a while ago. Uh, I will read it again. Deep learning is the examining of new facts and ideas critically, tying tying them into existing cognitive structures and making numerous links between ideas. While surface learning class are accepting new facts and ideas and critically and attempting to store them as isolated and unconnected items. So, as ang better, which is better between the two, the deep learning or the surface learning? So, as a teacher, we like to choose the deep learning. And it is advisable class, the deep learning. So the characteristic of deep learning is looking for meaning, focusing on the central arguments or concepts needed to solve a problem, interacting activity actively, distinguishing between argument and evidence, making connections between difficult modules, relating new to previous knowledge, and linking course content to real life. So this Deep learning is a real-life situation. While surface learning relying on the root learning, focusing on outward signs and the formula needed to solve a problem, receiving information passes passively, falling to distinguish, treating parts of modules and programs separately, not recognizing new material as building as previous work, Seeing course content simply and material to be learned for the exam. We have here class encouraged by students. Deep learning. In deep learning, having an intrinsic curiosity in the subject, being determined to do well and mentally engaged when doing academic work. So in deep learning, a student is mentally engaged when doing academic work class. So in deep learning, having the appropriate background knowledge for a sound foundation and having time to pursue interest through good time management and a positive experience of education leading to confidence in one's ability to understand and succeed. While in surface learning class, studying a degree for a qualification and not being interested in the subject, not focusing on the academic areas, but emphasizing others like social, 
and sport. Lacking background knowledge and understanding necessary to understand a material. Not enough time or too much workload. And scenic view on education believe that factual recall is what is required. So that is the difference of deep learning and surface learning in encouraged by students. The last one is encouraged by teachers. In deep learning, relating new material to what students already know and understand. Allowing students to make mistakes without penalty and rewarding, rewarding effort. Being consistent and fair in assessing declared in intended learning outcomes, hence establishing trust. While in surface learning, conveying disinterest or even a negative attitude to material. Presenting material so that it can be perceived as a series of unrelated facts and ideas. Allowing students to be passive and assessing for independent facts like short answer question rushing to cover too much material emphasizing coverage at the expense of depth and creating undue anxiety or low expectations of success by encouraging statements or excessive workload having a short assessment cycle So deep learning, as claimed, is positive, while surface learning is negative. So therefore, class, students should be encouraged to engage in deep learning no matter the difficulty. To encourage active learning is to be positive about the study of a particular subject area. There is a need to concentrate on the key concepts not only in isolation, but also by demonstrating the way the components link together. The assessment must give students the opportunity to receive feedback, but also must make the assessment relevant to the field of study. Repeated testing is seen to likely produce surface learning in the absence of opportunity to engage in problem solving. Learning styles and preferences learning can be done in different ways. On the part of the students, learning is achieved by close observation, seeing and hearing, working alone and in groups, reasoning logically and intuitively, memorizing, visualizing and modeling. Some prefer pictures to text, others prefer concrete to ab before abstract. Teaching method also vary. There are teachers who lecture, others demonstrate or discuss, some focus on principles and others on applications, some emphasizes memory and others understanding. So class, that's the end of our discussion for today. So for your quiz, I have here, so the instruction is limit your response to a maximum of five sentences only. You shall be scored based on content, organization, and accuracy of your answer. So I have a, two questions here. Uh, in your I own idea, why do we need to consider the factors affecting cognitive development of children? And the second question is, how does the background of individual learners explain their behavior and performance in school? For your assignment, make a Venn diagram that represents the characteristics of an independent learner from other students. So, your guys, class, your... Okay, class. Your answer to quiz and assignment should be submitted through email, through my email. So, it's in the screen. Uh, the file name format should be the family name underscore assignment or if it's a quiz, then underscore quiz. Then, for record purposes, please send a message in our FB group chat that you have already sent your output. 
So class, that's all for today. Thank you and goodbye.